Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all ways. Well, we're still caught up in that Easter season, and it's such an interesting season because it's that season of the apostles are kind of still confused about what they're supposed to do with themselves. Um, as they, they've seen the risen Lord, but they're realizing that it's not like it used to be. He's not just kind of with us all the time. He pops in and out. And we're fighting in our lives, too. That God pops in and out. And sometimes you wonder, where is he now? And then he sends it back. He says, it's your job to take care of it. So as we're, we're challenged as a church today to bring that message alive in good times and hard times and to know that that message lives in us. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you show us the way to our eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. talked about the Good Shepherd quite often, but I think today what I really want to talk about is about the flock. And that first reading from Acts of the Apostles is a lot about the flock. Sometimes it seems like it would be really good if you lived back there, and maybe you saw that crippled man at the gate jump up with Peter and John, and said, silver and gold I have none, but in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And there's all these different miracles that Jesus had. Sometimes, <clears throat> if, if you want to say to the Lord, if you'd only show yourself to me, it would be fine. Everything will go on just perfectly. But the reality of the church was it didn't work like that for anybody. And so this first missionary journey that we hear about today um, is, if you look at the background behind that, um, just recently, Stephen, the deacon, had been stoned in Jerusalem. Uh, James the Apostle was murdered. Um, and all of a sudden, everybody but the Apostles left Jerusalem. And they all moved up to what we call Syrian Antioch. There were lots of Antiochs because there was several kings named Antiochus and they all were the city named after him. But the reality is, so if you look at, if you think about Israel, Israel is, is like the coast of China, and, and Mediterranean is right along the coast. And as it comes out here is Turkey. Okay, so as you're going up there, Antioch is right at the peak. Um, and that's where the Christians did. They walked through. They went all the way through Israel, through Syria, um, and up to Syria and Antioch, which is right on the Turkish border. Now, St. Paul grew up a little bit, little bit away from there in Turkey as well. It's amazing how much Turkey has to do with our history as Christians, um, all through the Byzantine Republic and all that. It's all about Turkey. It really is so much of there. But it's not only about Turkey. As you look at these people, Turkey was settled and Antioch was settled by people from all over the known world. So it became the center of Christianity in those early centuries. As soon as it was unsafe for them to be in Jerusalem, everybody moved up there. Prophets, teachers, and, and, and there was also a large Jewish settlement in Antioch as well. So it's interesting, this first missionary journey that St. Paul, um, it, it says right here, St. Paul um, were on a relief mission. They were bringing food to all the people in Jerusalem and supplies for all of the people that were persecuted there and the ones that were left in jail. So Paul had been down there on a mission with Barnabas and Mark. And then they come back to Antioch to tell the Christians who had all moved up there. They were all refugees. So again, we have a refugee history in ourselves as Christians. They were all refugees up here in Antioch. And um, so they go to tell them all about this relief mission and how nice it was. And somehow they said, you need to not only do this, these missions to Jerusalem, you need to go out and bring the good news. And so they chose, and I wanted to read today the names of those they chose. Barnabas, Barnabas was born in Cyprus. It's a little island right at that peak of Syria and um, 
um, Turkey come together. If you move into the Mediterranean, there's a big island named Cyprus. And um, later on it became Greek, but at that time it was um, still part of, of, the, um, of, of Turkey. So as, as you see them, uh, Barnabas was from there, but he was also he had a Jewish level. So you have two cultures there. The Cyprus culture was very much Greek, so he would have spoken Greek fluently, plus he would have spoken Hebrew fluently. Then they chose Simeon, known as the Niger. He was from uh, the area which is now Nigeria and Africa. Um, he was a, a black African. And Lucius of Cyrene also was a black man from Africa. And then they spoke, uh, they would have spoken probably in both of those places. They would have learned uh, to speak the Latin language and they also would have learned to speak most of the Hebrew languages. And then Benin, he grew up with Herod. Um, so he's part of the royal family, but he's, again, part Jewish and part Roman. And then you have Saul, who was Roman and Jewish. So you have all of this league of nations from different continents, from different countries, with different languages, all coming together. And that was absolutely unheard of at the time. I think it just would not have happened. And it's happening with this religion that the world is hating. It's happening as they're, they're, they're persecuted by the Romans, they're persecuted by the Jews, they're persecuted by everybody. And so much so, like I said, that they had to totally move from their homeland, that they're refugees now up in this area. But as they become refugees, what happens? They learn other languages. They learn other cultures. The Holy Spirit is at work in all the bad things that led to them being where they were. And in that struggle, there they are. And now they said, we need to tell the rest of the world. So um, this, this group of, of multicultural people that speak all different kinds of language with all different kinds of backgrounds all go off to tell the world about Jesus. And it was difficult, to say the least. <laughs> and so you would see these events where they would have um, uh, like an experience like today where it says um, they, they get there and uh, they're having a great time. The people are interested. And it was interesting because in Antioch also, there was a number of non-Jews that were, would go to the Jewish synagogues because it was a place that they could learn about gods. The Jews tolerated the converts. They never looked for converts. No other religion ever looked for converts. Nobody came and said, you want to join my religion? Oh, no. You were part of a religion because the Romans said you're going to be a part of your, this religion. The Greeks said you're going to be a part of this religion. Your, the African tribes said you're going to be a part of this religion. Or you were born into it because it was a cultural thing, like the Jews. And if you were a non-Jew, you could be affiliated with it, but you never, ever would belong. So even Jesus' grandmother, Ruth, was not able to belong. Um, she was always on the outside. Um, so it's, it's kind of an interesting thing as we see um, this, this whole group coming together. And they're saying to people, we want you to join, and they called it the way. We want you to be a part of a new way of life that makes sense, where people of every culture, every race, every language, every way of life can come together in one spirit, realizing that one Savior, Jesus, was there for all of us and called us into one baptism. And some people hear it and they say, wow, that's exciting. And other people say, oh no, that's not the way we do it here. And then they try to kill them. That's what they do. You don't like them, you try to kill them. So that's what they did. And um, uh, politically correct now, we just try to kill them in our minds. But the reality is, it's just so crazy. And so as they go there, at first, the, 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 um, the Jewish Christians are at least listening, the ones in Antioch, because they were open to have the Gentiles come to their synagogue, so they were kind of open. But then there were others that were that came down from Palestine that heard that the, the, the Jews and the Gentiles were listening to this little group of Christians. So they came up and they started all kinds of rumors, they started all kinds of lies, they stirred up all kinds of problems, and so consequently they couldn't even wander around 
the, the, the place. And the Gentiles, it says the Gentiles were delighted when they heard about this word of the Lord, that there was a place for them, because they were so used to being in the synagogue where the place for them was on the back seat of the bus. You don't belong here. And so now all of a sudden they're hearing about a religion that says, we want you. You belong. This is a home. You have a place at the table. You're part of this. And this beautiful vision for the Gentiles, yet it says, that, uh, so that stirred up the, the Jews then in Antioch, who um, incited women of prominence who were worshippers. I like that. Incited women of prominence who were worshippers and the leading men of the city to stir up problems, because they were the ones who could stir up the problems. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so you, you see this. So Paul and Barnabas, what did they do? They had, it, it got so impossible for them to stay there, they knew they would likely be killed. So that sends them off on their first missionary journey. They shake the dust from their feet. They shake it off. They don't carry it with them. Whatever resentments, whatever negativity, we're leaving it right here in Antioch, and we're off to Cyprus. So they went off to Barnabas' homeland, hoping that they would have a better setup. And then they go through all different places. And then there's three missionary journeys like this that, that, um, that carry on. Um, but it's, it's, it's such a powerful thing. And as they go on these missionary journeys, there's trauma after trauma, ugly thing after ugly thing, death, violence, hatred, you name it, and miracles, and grace, and amazing displays of courage, and a witness to what Jesus means, that those who live for Jesus were willing even to die for Jesus, and they had to bring this message. They could not leave it alone. It was, there was a spirit in them that was going to come up, and even come, yeah, actually eventually Paul came back against even the, uh, the earlier Christians, the, they, 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 because on the second missionary journey, they came back and um, the early Christians were pretending that they were friends with the Gentiles um, when um, nobody was looking, but when the Jews came from the Holy Land, they would um, stop being nice to them and they wouldn't eat with them and they would go back to all their lives. St. Paul's, that's that called the whole council because St. Paul says, you cannot behave one way at one time and when somebody's looking at you, behave another way. And so, but you see all of this crazy stuff going on and in the midst of it, the religion flourished. We have all kinds of crazy stuff goes on in our life. But what happens is, is oftentimes, I think, we want to give up. We want to say it's too hard. We want to say we don't like this cross part of it. We like the miracle part of it. We like the changing water to wine. We even like walking on the water. That's all very nice. But the reality is, what it means I'm going to suffer a little bit, what it means some people are going to reject me, what it means people are going to call me names or hate me, then all of a sudden it's a little bit too far to go. And so we see the troubles, but we don't see the miracles sometimes. But that challenge to get filled with the risen Christ as these were, to get filled with the risen Christ that will not give up because we are confident and we are not. We do know who we are, what we're working for, and what we want to accomplish. And we trust that whether we see it or not, it doesn't matter because God can use anything, even by sufferings and death, to make a difference. Any God who could use a death on a cross to save the world can use my little sufferings, my little struggles, whatever they may be, and make them into something that is there in the world. So we have this marvelous and beautiful challenge that we know what our life is about, we know who our shepherd is, and that shepherd calls us towards eternal life. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures all of those sheep you have redeemed by the precious, precious blood of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Now may God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth to the Lord and the servant. Closing hymn, we find the Breaking Bread Missile number 566. 
the strike zone, number 566. Thank you. 